What's good in the hood? It's your girl Cleo, and we need to talk about Kana Bridge of Spirits. First of all, I want to say thank you to Epic for gifting me the game early. I have had an absolute blast diving into this world that you created. I mean, it is challenging. And I say that only because I just finished getting my ass <laughs> kicked literally two minutes ago. <laughs> Um, I paused and took a second so that I could do this review. So thank you again, Epic. I mean, this game, wow. If you don't know, Kenna Bridge of Spirits is actually the debut game of Ember Labs. Ember Labs is a small studio that was founded in 2009 by brothers Mike and Josh Greer. Now, like many console exclusives, this was supposed to come out during the holiday of 2020. However, of course, because of the pandemic, that was pushed back. Now, what's interesting is Ember specializes in creating content for major franchises, including Coca-Cola, MLB, and KFC. But don't worry, you won't find any random Coca-Cola or chicken sandwiches in your game. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Hideo. <laughs> Kana Bridge of Spirits is a beautiful third person action adventure game that takes place in a colorful world where the passage between life and death is a lot like my last relationship. Complicated. You see, the souls of those who lived troubled lives find themselves unable to transition peacefully into the afterlife. That's where you come in. You play as Kana, a young and determined spirit guide whose goal is to help those conflicted souls. You see, when someone dies with unresolved business or traumas, their spirit is trapped between the world of the living and the world of the dead. So Kana helps solve whatever troubles they have to ensure an easy trip to the afterlife. Now Kana's mission ends up sending her on an epic journey to an abandoned village far from her homeland. The surrounding area is plagued by a mysterious curse that turns corrupted spirits into vicious beasts. Here she'll discover hidden dungeons and uncover mysteries to help restore balance to her world. Let's get into the design of the game. Yes, the game does look like you've been thrust into a Pixar film. But it does so with an elegant charm amidst lush green forestry and rustic ancient temples. It feels less cartoonish and more like you're in a painting. Being Ember Lab's first game is remarkable just how well the game plays, looks, and feels. Honestly, you'd think they'd had a couple AAA titles out by how well it's done. Pace and story-wise, it's a pretty fast-moving story. Uh, there's not a lot of slow burn to get composition or figure out where or why you need to be somewhere. It kind of just shoves you in the right direction and helps you figure out the rest. It's not an open world game, it's more of like a wide and linear path with a clear direction of where the player needs to go. There's some moments to branch off to find hidden treasures like Hidden Rot, which I promise we'll talk about later. Now it's not without noting that Kana Bridge of Spirits has drawn some inspiration from popular franchises like Uncharted, Pikmin, and even God of War. But most obvious is Zelda. From exploration to dungeons and even combat, it's clear Kana takes some of its cues from the franchise giant. And it's actually pretty fitting considering until now, the only other well-known Ember Labs creation was a short animated film they created that went viral in 2016 called Terrible Fate, which is based on Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. I mean, visually, it's absolutely stunning. And being Ember Lab's first game, it's remarkable how this looks and feels. You wouldn't be able to tell that they've never had a game out before. That's how well it plays. I'd like to point out that the brothers' cinematic experience really shows throughout this game. I just enjoy watching it. From the camera angles themselves to the framing of conversations and even introducing new adversaries, it's a beautiful game to look at. What I love is how they communicate with the player, creating setting changes or introducing us to new characters. And although they do brute force us into these beautifully cinematic cutscenes, they don't drag on or feel cumbersome amongst the gameplay itself. You really feel like you're playing a beautiful animated short film. Sound-wise, it boasts a really magnificent Balinese-influenced soundtrack. The score flows as beautifully as the animation within this ethereal setting. and each location has its own unique sound.
The music and sound may feel a little familiar to those of you who've seen animated films in recent years. Composed by Jason Galati and most notably Diwa Putu Barada, a musician from Bali known for his work on Disney's Raya and the Last Dragon, and whose daughter Dewa Ayu ended up voicing Kina herself. I mean, how awesome is that? For her first voiceover gig, this killed it. I love the sound effect accents that happen throughout the game. Certain actions like picking up a new rot have sounds that perfectly fit into the underscore of the music itself. The tribal tones of light drums, flutes make for a calming yet exciting backdrop amongst all the magic happening. Ambient sounds of the forest broken up by the sudden tap of drums at the appearance of a strange character all add to the mystery and wonder of this game. Let's get into the characters. The Rot. Probably my favorite characters in the game. They are absolute showstoppers. The Rot are tiny and incredibly adorable creatures whose main role is actually the exact opposite. Decomposition. Yeah. You heard me right. They're sort of a personification of decomp, breaking down the decay around each location you traverse. And it makes sense within the scheme of Kana's job, keeping the circle of life in order, if you will. You can find rot in various nooks and crannies like hiding beneath a rock or inside of hanging fruit. Kana can collect up to a hundred of these critters, 60 of them being optional. And when Kana bonds with these cute companions, they'll tag along like Pikmin, assisting with combat and puzzle solving. In battle, the rod is actually pretty timid and shy, so they don't lend much of a hand. But when you successfully land attacks, a rot courage meter fills, allowing you to call on the rot to augment their power to help you dish out stronger attacks. And in cute combat companion fashion, you can also instruct the rot to distract enemies, causing them to lower their defenses and give you a better opportunity to attack. While the rot is similar to Pikmin, you won't have to worry about losing your decom friends in battle. You can throw them at as many baddies as you like and they won't die. And it wouldn't be a cute companion without a little customization. Don't get me started on the hats. But don't worry, there are no microtransactions. You can simply use in-game currency to buy items from various vendors. Let's talk a little bit about gameplay. Now, Kana can jump, climb, and clamor around her surroundings in a very similar fashion to the Uncharted series while she and the Rot solve puzzles to access new areas, find more Rot or unearth hidden gems. Kana can also use the Rot or her powers to purify corrupted paths, destroy obstacles, grapple, and use the rot to pick up items like blocks for Kana to climb to reach well, the unreachable. Combat-wise, it's a lock-on style combat system, which feels a little bit like Dark Souls with less difficulty. Although if you would have asked me that about 20 minutes ago, I would have said, it's a lot like Dark Souls. It's very difficult. But thankfully, there are difficulty settings, so if you find yourself in a tough spot, you can just crank it down to easy, and then when you're done beating the baddie, you crank it back up to hard and impress your friends. <laughs> No, I didn't do that. That's not what I did at all. I, I was I was playing on hard. I wasn't even. Stop the cap. What? Huh? Overall, I think this is an absolutely fantastic game. It's got a very interesting story, really fun dialogue. Of course, a cute and cuddly companion. I mean, who doesn't love putting cute, cuddly companions in hats? That's all I need. That's a win for me right there. <laughs> I think it's great for all ages, and I hope that you will give it a shot. Shout out to Ember for making something so beautiful right out of the gate. I can't wait to see what they have in store for us next. Thank you again to Epic for gifting me this game. I am having a lot of fun. It is challenging, but it is so much fun. And thank you all for watching. I'm so, so grateful for all the love I got on my very first first impressions that we're gonna keep on doing it like this one here. So if you don't wanna miss out on any more content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, thumbs up and notification bell so that you know every time I go live or I post another video. I hope you all have an amazing day. Thanks again for watching and I'll see See you in the next one. Oh, Yoshi says, uh, click, click that down there, right there. Yeah, he says, click that. It'll do something cool. What else are you saying? Oh, oh, and this.
This is apparently really dope. He says to click that. Okay, not eat my hair though. Is that it? Is that what it? Oh, he's saying have a good day. Okay. Thanks, Yosh. 